Hey guys, the objective of today's video is to give you an introduction to foundations, as well as the different types of shallow foundations which we'll be considering in this topic. And finally, the different types of bearing capacity failure modes experienced in shallow foundations. So foundations are part of the structures that transfer loads imposed by the superstructure to the ground, the superstructure being structures which are above the ground, and substructures are structures which are below the ground. Generally, foundations undergo compressive loading, but in some cases, they may experience tensile loading. Different foundations are used depending on the ground conditions. Shallow, found shallow foundations transfer loads to the upper layer of soil which is strong enough to carry the imposed load. Deep foundations, on the other hand, are used to transfer the imposed loads to deeper, stronger layers in the ground when the upper soil layers are not strong enough. Let's now look at different types of shallow foundations. So here we have spread footings, which generally support individual columns. If the footing is square shaped, the width and length dimensions will be the same. If a concentric load is applied, the pressure beneath the footing base will be uniform. The pressure is found by the compressive load being divided by the area of the footing. In strip footings, the length is typically much longer than the width. Strip footings provide support for line loads, for example, load-bearing walls or closely spaced columns. In geotechnical design, strip footings are considered to be infinitely long, so we consider a unit length. And the pressure beneath the footing is found by dividing the compressive load by the area of the footing, which is the base multiplied by unit length. Shallow footings experience bearing capacity failure under excessive loadings. The first type of failure is general shear failure, which is characterized by the formation of continuous failure planes in the ground. Heaving can occur adjacent to the footing, and this type of failure is typical for dense sand and overconsolidated clay. Punching failure causes a large settlement of the footing. The shear failure is confined to areas in close proximity of the perimeter of the footing, and this type of failure is typical for loose sand, silt, and normally consolidated clay. Finally, we have local shear failure, which can be considered as being in between general shear failure and punching failure. This is typical for medium dense to loose sand of high compressibility potential. And that's it for today's video. Hope this helps, guys.